So I want to discuss briefly this requirement that j is not zero and how does it relate to the map being one-to-one uh, uh, -one and onto and do, they necessar do these requirements necessarily coincide? The answer is no, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't have been stated separately. So let me start with an example, with an example. Um, let's look at the, so example, let's look at the, at the r theta change of variables. So remember r, sorry, x, x is r cosine theta and y is r sine of theta. Okay, so this gives us a correspondence between the xy plane and the r theta plane where each point xy can be uh, converted to a point r theta where r measures the distance from the origin in the xy plane and theta the angle to the positive x-axis, right? We all know that, okay? Suppose we look, here's the r theta plane. Here's the r theta plane. This is theta, this is r. And let's look at the following domain in the r theta plane. Let's look at a, a, a strip, a strip like this. where, for example, this is r equals 1, and this is r equals 2. This is 0, and suppose that, for example, this is 2 pi, and maybe this is 4 pi, and suppose we only look at this portion of it. Let's take this domain. So this is a nice rectangle in uh, r theta, where r is bounded between 1 and 2, and theta is bounded between 0 and 4 pi. Do you agree? What would be the, the, so this is E. This is E. Okay, this is a domain in the r theta plane. What would it correspond to, what would it correspond to under this mapping in the xy plane? Here's the xy plane. What would this domain E correspond to in the xy plane? So all the points are going to have their r between 1 and 2. So it's going to be a ring between two circles, one of radius 1 and the other of radius um, root 2, right? Something like this. Do you agree? And so this is 1 and this is root 2, right? And what about the thetas? So the thetas measure the angle to the positive x-axis. The thetas are between 0. You have to look up here for a second. Look up here. Don't write. Look up here. Between 0, the theta is the angle to the positive x-axis. So it's between 0 and 4 pi. Do you agree? Okay. So we're going to get this entire, this entire ring here. This is the corresponding domain D. But this is a very misleading picture. Because we're getting this ring wrapped around itself twice. Do you see that? Two different points here, for example, if we look, let's say, at this point here, suppose this is, um, this is, let's say, pi, and this is 3 pi, and let's look at the point where r equals, I don't know, 1. So this point here, the point 1 pi in, in theta and r, and this point here, these are two distinct points in E, which both map to what point here, r equals 1, and theta equals pi, and then theta equals 3 pi, these two points map to the same point here. Does everybody see that? Do you agree? Everybody? So this is an example where we can't use the theorem, because this map is not one-to-one -one on these domains. Do you agree? Okay, so 
uh, the map is not one to one between E and D. Okay? Even this good old map of just converting to polar coordinates. Is this clear? Do you understand what just happened here? Okay? What about the Jacobian? What's the Jacobian for this transformation of variables? Uh, R. R. We calculated it. It was R. Is it ever zero in this domain? It's never zero. Okay? So let's add, I'm going to add it here, although j is not zero, the map is not one-to-one -one between e and d. So the requirement that j be not zero does not suffice in order to guarantee that the map is one-to-one. -one. Is that clear? Good? And in fact, j could be zero at the origin. The origin is not included, but we, I'm saying something for the second time. Even if it were, the theorem would still hold, because it's a single point. But that's besides the point of this example. Is it clear what I try to, to show here? Okay, so these are two separate requirements that have to be verified separately when you want to use the theorem. Okay. I want to give you some more insight into into this business of the Jacobian and the map being one-to-one, -one, it's going to be a special case. So here's another example. It's going to be a special case. And in this case, in fact, the two, the two requirements do coincide. And they're very easy to understand. Okay. Suppose... So... What? Suppose... Uh, we have... A linear map. What do I mean by a linear map? Our x of uv and y of uv are just linear maps. x of uv is uh, au plus bv, and y of uv is cu plus dv. Okay, let's write that. x of uv is some a u plus b v and y of u v is c u plus d v where a b c and d are just scalars just constants okay this is a linear map we know that, so saying a linear map is something we can say in slightly more um, precise words uh, taken from algebra, linear transformation. Okay, so what we have here is a linear transformation. Let's call it T, usually the letter used for linear transformations, where how does T act on UV? It does this. How do we write that in algebra? We would write a matrix, A, B, C, D, times u v. Do you agree that this is precisely the map that does that? What we get is a u plus b v for the first coordinate, c u plus d v for the second coordinate. Do you see that? Let's write that. a u plus b v, c u plus d v. Good? Clear? So this is the new coordinate. This is the x and y. X, Y is T of U, V. Clear? Is it clear what's going on here? I just transferred to writing in ways that you're more familiar with from algebra, right? But we know some stuff from algebra. Algebra is not a useless course. What do we know from algebra? When is a linear transformation invertible? I don't know if you already reached that in your, in your discussion if you're taking algebra this quarter. But there's a, a very easy and, and useful statement that a linear transformation is invertible if and only if the matrix is invertible. And when is a matrix invertible if and only if its determinant is not zero? Okay. 
So if you haven't seen that in algebra, I'll just tell you this, and when you see it in algebra, you're going to say, ah, oh, we know that from calculus. And your algebra teacher is going to say, what? And then you're going to explain. Okay, so T has an inverse, an inverse transformation. T is invertible if and only if A is invertible. A is this matrix, the matrix of the coefficients. This is A. And A is invertible, a matrix is invertible, a square matrix, 2 by 2 or 17 by 17 is invertible, if and only if the determinant of A is not 0. Clear? So for a linear transformation, it's very easy to check when it's invertible or not. And in this case, in this case, this is if and only if, in this case, it's if and only if, what's this determinant? It's A, B, C, D. What's the Jacobian for this transformation? What's the Jacobian for this transformation? It's X with respect to U, A, X with respect to B, sorry, X with respect to V, B, Y with respect to U, derivatives, C, and Y with respect to V, D, matrix, determinant, it's exactly the determinant of A. So this is if and only if J is not zero. For this linear transformation, linear map, okay? So in the case of a linear transformation between uh, the, the XY plane and the UV plane, okay? The condition that the transformation is invertible, that it's one-to-one, -one, coincides with the condition that the Jacobian is not zero. Clear? That's for a very special case of a linear map. Good? Okay. So, in general, in general, let me write this. So, in general, J not equal to zero uh, in E does not, does not guarantee, does not imply that the map given by um, X U V and Y U V is one-to-one. One. That's the general statement. However, there is uh, one thing you can say. This follows from the inverse function theorem, which we discussed uh, a while ago. Um, if j is not zero at a point, Okay, if it's not zero at a point, um, then the map is one to one in some neighborhood of that point. But this does. A positive statement of this form does not follow from this, because you can't just take all the points and say then it's one-to-one -one on the entire domain. It could be one-to-one -one here, one-to-one here, one-to-one here, one-to-one here, but when you glue all these neighborhoods together, you come around and you get not one-to-one. -one. Okay, just like what happened on the circle. In every neighborhood of every point, let's look back at this example that we started out with, at every point here, every point here had a neighborhood where the map was one-to-one, -one, right? This little neighborhood transfers to a little neighborhood here. So it's one-to-one -one here, and one-to-one -one here, and one-to-one -one here, and one-to-one -one here, and one-to-one -one here. But when you 
take all these neighborhoods on which it's one-to-one, -one, they start covering themselves again. So it doesn't imply being one-to-one -one on the entire domain. Did you follow what I just said? Is it clear? Okay, so the general statement, the general statement, the Jacobian being not zero does not guarantee the map being one-to-one. -one. You have to check that separately. Although, although you do have this positive statement of being non-zero at a point does guarantee uh, that the map is one-to-one -one in a neighborhood. Okay. So this, this, this is maybe a, a deceiving uh, statement. I'll put it, I'll, I'll hide it a bit. This is the important lesson from this um, clip, okay? What we still don't know, and that's, the, that's our business for the next clip, is what is this J, how to understand it. In fact, it has a very, very clear geometric interpretation. J does something geometrically, okay? And that's our next discussion. What is J?